to the, to the Flagstaff House, to, where the president is said to have a meeting with the council of members of the Council of State, as well as members of the, uh, the Petroleum Tanker uh, Association. Well, that meeting, those pictures are coming to you live from the Flagstaff House. We can go over and hear bits and pieces of that in return to our stories here. Since our last meeting with you on June 20th, 2017, the Council has met 14 times in plenary and committee sessions, thus bringing the total number of meetings since our inauguration to 38 somebody with a science background, on the average about seven meetings a month. During the two-month period, the Council has examined and approved appointments to 38, 32 boards of state institutions and universities. These have been done after due consideration of the statutes that set them up to ensure compliance with the law, including gender requirements and a critical examination of the CVs of nominees vis-a-vis -vis their expected roles and responsibilities. It is gratifying to note, Your Excellency, that Council's observations about some of the appointments have always been well received by Your Excellency. Over this period, Council has also met with a number of ministers and heads of public sector institutions to shed light on their activities. They include the Ministers for Agriculture, Energy, Fisheries, Lands and Natural Resources, as well as heads of security agencies uh, like the Chief of Defense Staff and the Inspector General of Police. Mr. President, under Article 91, Clause 3 of the 1992 Constitution, the Council of State, quote, may upon request or on its own initiative make recommendations on any matter being considered by Parliament and other organs of state, end of quote. However, since the inception of the Fourth Republic some 25 years ago, there has not been any formal structures to provide modalities for the fulfillment of this constitutional provision. To remedy this situation, and particularly to afford the Council the opportunity to contribute to bills being considered by Parliament, its legal constitutional and petitions committee has had, an, uh, has had an initial meeting with the Speaker and the leadership of Parliament to discuss processes to be laid down to ensure a harmonious working relationship between the Council of State and Parliament. Judging from the desire of the Speaker and the leadership to establish such linkage, we confidently look forward to those to these two important state institutions working closely together. Your Excellency, a very interesting request was made by the Right Honorable Speaker and the leadership of the House that we would like to bring to your attention. Parliament would like the former Assembly Press, normally referred to as the government printer to be returned to it. The military governments removed the assembly press from parliament's control since there was no parliament and converted it to state publishing corporation. Since parliament no longer has a printing house to publish the gazette, bills, and most importantly, the Hansard, the public is also denied access to its valuable tool for democratic governance of our dear country. Your Excellency, in the latter part of June 2017, the Council received a communication under your own hand, seeking the Council's advice 
on the creation of new regions. And close in the communication were copies of petitions from some chiefs and peoples of the western, northern, Brongahafu and Volta regions, where the demands for the creation of new regions had been the most worst for us. Mr. President, the Council has meticulously studied these petitions, which, though from only four regions, numbered some 312 pages in total, with accompanying maps and statistical data. The Council was also briefed by the Honorable Minister for Regional Reorganization and Development, Honorable Dan Kwakubuche, on his interactions with the chiefs and people of the four regions. The Honorable Minister did impress the Council with the elaborate homework he had done on this exercise, including the extensive literature review on Ghana's geopolitical structure. Mr. President, the Council of State has had the honor, has the honor to inform you that having studied the petition submitted and the detailed briefing by the Honorable Minister for Regional Reorganization and Development, it is of the unanimous view, opinion, that there is a substantial demand for the creation of new regions in the country. The Council, therefore, advises that Your Excellency appoint a commission of inquiry to inquire into the need and to, commit and to make recommendations on all the factors involved in the creation of the new regions. Mr. President, I thank you for your attention. I now have the honor, Mr. President, I must get up this time, to formally hand over to you the Council's communication on our advice that there's a substantial demand for the creation of new rules, and we are uh, advised to appoint a commission of inquiry accordingly. Chairperson, members of the council, let me first thank you very much for the initiative of this meeting. The gesture is extremely welcome. For me, it testifies to your determination to work closely with the president in the interest of our people. I have to thank you for the expeditious manner in which you have been going about your business in assisting uh, the, the presidency to complete the task of uh, for, uh, populating the executive and the state institutions of our country. The work has been expeditious, but it has also been very thorough. And I've seen the same uh, approach being manifested in this case. My letter to you was dated the 29th of June, and today is the 15th of August. The letter is dated the 15th of August, which means that basically the 312 pages, you've had six weeks to <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> and uh, I think that it's extremely commendable. I would like to say at your advanced age, I suspect that would be too much to say, but uh, at the, uh, where you are and what you represent, I think that that is really a record dispatch with which you have looked at it. And I'm grateful. I think the people of Ghana also will be grateful to you for what, what you have done. I think the two of us, this Council of State and the President, we have embarked on a new journey 
It's an exciting journey, I believe, and I believe at the end of the day, it will be a journey that will inure to the better governance of our country if the support of the population can be established. But it is a new endeavor in the history, of the 25-year history of the fourth of the Fourth Republic, nothing like this has been attempted. Uh, suggestions of it have been, uh, initial steps have been taken, but we have never got this formal engagement that we now have uh, to, about restructuring the regional governance of our nation. So it's an important step that this afternoon we're taking. Um, I'm emboldened in taking this step by the support that you have emanated in your response to my request. I think that the quality of people who are assembled in this Council of State expressing themselves unanimously on this is a very important development in the public interest of our country. And I have to express my gratitude towards you for doing that. As you know, the Constitution then says that now, having given a positive response to the request from the President, that the President will go ahead now and establish a commission of inquiry to look into the, to the demand, to see that it's, 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 it's reflected in the responses from the people, and also to deal with ancillary issues that emerge, the boundaries, the name, and all of those matters will be the remit of the Council of State, of the Commission of Inquiry. I, I don't think that the Commission of Inquiry is one that we need to give a timetable to, but I would hope that once it's established, that they will work also as expeditiously as you have done. I think that matters like this are matters that ought to be determined with dispatch so that the body politic of Ghana can gain from stability and knowing exactly what is the next step ahead of us. Uh, I don't intend to, to dally too long about the composition of the Council of, Inqu of the Commission of Inquiry. Um, I have been thinking about it for some time, uh, hoping that I would get from you a positive response. <laughs> so, uh, and anticipating that means that I'm now in a position to move quite rapidly towards it. So I think very soon you will hear about the, the next steps that are, we're taking. And my constitutional instrument will set up the Commission of Inquiry and frame the terms of reference, which are relatively straightforward to do. Uh, then we take the work from there. With respect to the other matters that you have uh, addressed in your letter, your presentation to me, um, I think that the matter of the assembly press is something that is relatively easy to handle. I think it's a, a discussion with, with the Parliament and, and its consequential uh, response. I think that is something that we can settle quite quickly. I see the force of the advice that you're giving. Uh, the Assembly Press was, in time past, an instrument for Parliament's work. Uh, and if it, now that we have a, a stable constitutional system in our country, uh, it's, it's time that all of these, which were part of the original order are reassembled. So it's something that I'll take up with the speaker. I'm surprised to some extent that the speaker chose to speak to you first and not to me. But, <laughs> but, uh, uh, okay. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. That, uh, that, that, that may well be the case. But that, it's, it's, uh, whichever way it is, I think, I think it's an important matter. As far as the Article 91 Clause 3 issues are concerned, I have spoken about this matter the first time we met. I think it's important that whatever arrangements emerge out of it should be carefully uh, undertaken. It's, um, I don't see it as being, with, when I say so with the greatest of respect, a busybody's charter, that, it, that you're, the Constitution has given you the remit to sort of poke your nose into everything that's going on. I think there is, there is the, the understanding is that you would exercise this power, this initiative in a responsible manner. And if a council of state cannot be trusted to act responsibly, then we're really up, uh, <laughs> up the creek. So, uh, but nevertheless, I believe it's a discussion that 
we should all contribute to. I don't think there's a matter just between you and the parliament. I think that the executive has a role to a contribution to make this in this discussion. And we will make it. We will let our, know, our, our views be known as to how we think that the, the remit and the, the limits and the boundaries of this power should be exercised and, then, and, and encourage the parliament also to do so. So that I don't know how at the end of the day we can concretize the decision but we'll find a way of being able to do so. So um, once again, I want to thank you very much for this meeting. I want also to continue to count on your support for the work that together the people of Ghana have imposed upon us. Uh, so far, I'm very satisfied with the quality of cooperation and support that I'm getting from the Council of State. And I'm happy to hear that other agencies of the executive are being engaged in by, by, by you so that we can get the benefit of the considerable experience and advice. The advantage of this system that I see it is extremely evident in the present composition of the council that you have people from all walks of life in Ghana who have distinguished themselves in their various fields of endeavor, coming together as a, as a body to be able to influence the development of the nation. I think that has to be something that is very, very creditable. Uh, I know there are demands for the Council of State to be replaced by a second chamber and all of that, but um, the, these are areas which my own view is that festina lente, we should all hasten slowly, because the body as it is already I think is, 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 is capable of doing a lot of very positive things if all of us go about it in the right way. So once again, let me thank you very much for coming. And um, I'm very happy about this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we did, we did uh, stick out our neck during the campaign <laughs> and promise and promise the people that if we were re-elected, we would, would do it. But I'm fortified by the fact that um, we were not the only one. <laughs> we were not the only one. Uh, in fact, in this matter, our, our <laughs> principal, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they promised more. In fact, my, 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 my opponent <laughs> promised even more oh, yes. than, <laughs> than I did. So, and he hasn't backed down. The last time we spoke about this matter, it was still very firm that uh, that, 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 that it should be done. So I'm expecting broad national support for this initiative that together we have began on today. And uh, let's hope it ends well and that the system of governance that we have now is strengthened by, by the conclusion of this process. So once again, thank you very much indeed. I don't know whether on your side or whether on the side of the ministers uh, there's a, uh, you want to add anything to this discussion or or not, yeah. But, oh, I have to put a record, my appreciation of the work of my minister. I see from your presentation that you singled him out for, for, for commendation. Um, you know, when you make these appointments, there's always somebody who will come and say, why are you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I say to myself, I think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> And uh, uh, your, your, your sentiments have given me a great deal of comfort that uh, the decision I made about this particular minister and this particular assignment has been well brought up. Thank you very much. Okay, we almost made a medal for him. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> of his work? Yes, of his work. He's been very, very Okay, okay. <laughs> So if you're wondering which of the ministers the president is referring to, you do know that it's Dan Boche, member of parliament for Okri. Well, you heard uh, the president speaking to the Council of State about the creation of the new uh, regions. Well, they advise that the, the Council of State is given the presidency, is actually in favor of that new creation. Now, the next step that they're going to have to take is for the president to appoint or put together a commission of inquiry. That will be the next step, and the president is looking to do that. Now, that pre that uh, commis commission of inquiry will be looking into matters of boundaries, names for that region, etc. He says that uh, 
the president says that he'll be moving rapidly towards this and uh, also urging the Council of State to exercise their power and to carry out this initiative responsibly. We'll bring you uh, reports on that in our subsequent bulletin. Elton Brobe will be there uh, very soon when it becomes necessary. We'll cross over again to the Flagstaff files because the president will also be meeting the Tanker Drivers Association as well. But right now, let's have a quick, a quick conversation.